Hey guys, what's up? It's the Snake Dude eighteen fourteen here, and today we are going to be doing a setup for Tegus. Now, this setup will specifically apply to any of the Argentine species. This one I have currently is a juvenile Argentine black and white tegu. There's also the Argentine red tegus, and I believe there is gold tegus. I'm pretty sure there is. I'm not totally clear on that. But, yeah, as you can see, this is the black and white variety. They're very beautiful animals, as you guys can tell. They're very inquisitive. They've got that awesome forked tongue, as you guys can see. Uh, she's sniffing around right now. And they're very, very calm lizards. Uh, however, these are not for beginner hobbyists, as they do get quite large. Adult male Argentine black and white tegus, and just even the red tegus, can get close to four feet. So, clearly, although this is obviously a setup for a baby... You need to be prepared for a large adult animal when the time comes. So we'll put her over here and let's get started. So first things first that I would like to show you guys is I'm a 20 gallon long setup. The 30 inch by 12 deep by about 12 inches high. Uh, that's practically perfect for a baby through a sub-adult tegu. The reason why you don't want to do anything smaller than a 10 gallon, or even just a 10 gallon in general, I probably wouldn't even do a 15 gallon for a baby tegu, is because you really want to let them roam around. They're very active lizards, they like to move, and you want to set up perfect temperature gradients. Uh, the hot side, you want them to have a basking temperature to about 95 degrees with UVB. Although most of their time as babies is spent underground and digging, they do come out to bask. Uh, yesterday, actually, while I was watching this particular tegu, she never came out at all yesterday. She was burrowed under her water bowl, I believe, or somewhere in the substrate. But then this morning, when I woke up, she was sitting on top of her basking log, which you guys will see in the setup later today. So, let's get started. Uh, again, as I said, 20 gallon long, 30 by 12 by 12. And let's get on the substrate. So substrate, as you guys can see here, this is a mix of Zoomed Eco Earth and Zoomed Forest Floor Cypress Mulch. You can use just Cypress Mulch. However, I feel like the Eco Earth will hold a little bit more water, which you will see why we will need that in a second. Because these are very, when they're young, they're very subterranean or fossorial. They love to stay underground, and that's where they get their high humidity from. And that's one of the keys uh, parts when keeping these in captivity. So what I like to do is, you know, I have a fairly deep layer. This is about a three foot layer. And what I also did, I, it's probably hard to see right now on the bottom, but I'll dig it up out a bit here for you guys. But there's actually a thing of repti carpet here. Repti carpet is very absorbent. It holds a lot of water. So when you're dumping water in here, and you want to do that because you want to make the substrate moist. As you can see down on these bottom layers, it's nice and damp. You don't want to make it super soggy, but just damp, as I said earlier. You want to be a nice microclimate, should one say it theirself. So, you know, spread it around, maybe make different layers, mix it all up too. You want a fairly even mix. I like to do 50% cypress, 50% eco earth, which is uh, ground coconut husk. And that's when you get to the second part, which is adding water to your substrate. So I'm just going to use my Mr. Bottle here, and we take this out, and literally you just you dump a little bit of water in. Uh, you want to get that substrate pretty damp, and you have to do this about every other day or so, just to keep the substrate fairly moist. Again, they do like to uh, burrow quite a bit, so you want to keep it a nice, damp, and moist habitat. And you, what you do is you let that settle in, you let that sink to the bottom, and that way when the tegu burrows, it's accessing a higher relative humidity. So as you can see now, after you pour it, you mix it up again, get that water really spread out, and there you go. Now the substrate's nice and damp, and our little tegu will be nice and happy. Now, as for um, uh, decor, there's you can go as elaborate or as simple as you like. Personally, in my experience with tegus, I have worked with them prior to this small juvenile one. They are very active lizards, as I said previously. They like to really dig, and they'll tear stuff up. So me, I like to go for a simple yet nice-looking setup. So what one can do is over here is uh, add a nice big water bowl. This is the Exoterra Extra Large Size, 
This is great too because if you have a large pan of water, the tegu can soak. They can add, it'll also evaporate and add a little bit higher humidity. So we'll just throw that right over here. Uh, I'm gonna take this. Here's a nice wood hideout. It's got a little peak hole. This is also her basking spot, as you've seen in her introduction video. She can sit right up there. And again, it just adds a little bit more enrichment for her, too. She can burrow under that and enjoy herself. And finally, as with most tegus, because they do eat somewhat of an omnivorous diet. Not greens, but um, uh, a lot of mo mostly carnivores, but there are special foods. So I just like to have a uh, food dish. I think this is a, this is the Zoomed Repti Rock food dish. I believe this is a small size. We can just place that right there. What we'll do is uh, I'll add water. I'll fill it up more after the video, guys, just because this is honestly, you know what? This should be a fine amount. That's perfect. That way she doesn't, that way she can soak if she gets in there, but it's not too heavy when it comes to cleaning. So, yeah, that's practically the initial shut up, uh, setup. Sorry, I slipped with the tongue right there again. And what I'll do is. We'll add our little baby Tegu, although she's more of a juvenile right now. Here she is, one last time. And what we'll do is we'll put her in there. There you go. She's such a sweet little lizard. So yeah, she's in there. And now I will add the lid on. This is just a screen lid. Uh, you can go something fancy like those Exoterra tanks that are front opening. Personally, this just seems fine for now. And now we add our light bulb. And that should turn on. So yeah, there we go. So I decided just to make this video easy. This will be sort of like a mix of both the setup and care. So now I'll get on to their physical care aspect and I'll start with the lighting. Um, uh, they need heat and UVB. They are from a fairly tropical area of the world. So they like it quite humid and it's hot. So for her, even though she's a baby and a 20 gallon, she has a 100 watt Zoomed power sun bulb. This makes heat, UVB, and visible light for her. It's perfect. It's literally, it mimics the sun. Oh, and there she is pooping for us. <laughs> That's a first. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for doing that. Give her a new setup and that's what she does. But you know, everybody has reptiles like that. So anyway, uh, basking spot, you want that to hit about 95. I know I didn't mention any thermometers in this tank just because this is her watch setup that I have currently on her. I did manage to check the temperatures. I quickly borrowed my uh, Zoomed probe from Vegas and then I just put it back in. And uh, yeah, so that's her at the moment. <sighs> still kind of laughing at the fact that she just pooped all over her new setup. It's pretty funny. Um, uh, but yeah, so 90 to 95 degree basking spot. Overall air temp, you want it to be about the 80s. Uh, cool side, it can drop down to about 75, but don't let it go lower than 70. That's a bit cold. Uh, as for nighttime temperatures, about 75 up to 82. I wouldn't let it get higher just because it's a night drop, so that's a good feature. Uh, as you guys can see right back here on the tank, I actually have a heat mat. And I know most people, they're a bit iffy with heat mats on lizards. But here's what I like to think. Tegus, as I mentioned earlier, they love to burrow. They love to get into their substrate. So it's kind of hard to heat them with a ceramic heat emitter if they're all the way on the underground. So how I see it is, is that you simply put the... Uh, heat mat on the side of the tank, not the bottom, just because you don't want them to burn their tummies. And this will heat this section of the ground, so when she burrows under, it'll still be warm for her on the underground part, I guess you could say. Uh, anyways, though, again, humidity, ambient humidity, probably keep it at about 60. Again, if you live up in the Midwest, which in this case is the United States, like I do, it can be a little bit hot and dry during the summer, which is why you dampen the substrate. Because even though if you have a humidity gauge and it says 30%, remember that when they're burrowed under the substrate, that humidity is going to be hitting even 80%, which is perfect, especially for a young growing tegu like her back here, which needs that high humidity. It's practically an absolute must. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, always like, 
Leave any comments if you have anything else that I possibly didn't mention. And I will see you guys in the next video. So, bye guys. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you later.